What we're going to be going over here is the pension plan gains and losses here. And really those gains and losses are the difference between the expected return and the actual return here on the pension plan assets. And they're referred to as an unexpected gain or loss. Now first off, an asset gain occurs when the actual return here is greater than the expected return and an asset loss occurs when the actual return is less than the expected return. But what we do with these uh, gains and losses here, they're going to be recorded in the account here, equity account called other comprehensive income under gains and losses. Now any prior year gains and losses are going to be accumulated in this other comprehensive income account. Okay, so let's go and look at our example here and I have it laid out in the pension worksheet format and we really got seven different accounts that we have to look at here. So let's start with our pension expense, the annual expense here on the pension plan. Okay, so first off we would have some service and these are just typical entries here and everything is in thousands of dollars and I have it labeled here A, B, C, D and so forth for the reference here between your debits and credits. So first off, let's say we had some service costs here and we had some interest cost here as a pension expense. So increase your pension expense by that amount. Now this is where we're going to get down to the expected return versus the actual return here and how we'd record it here in our pension expense account. Okay, so let's say our expected return here was $44,000 for the pension plan here, but the actual return was $64,000. So what we have to look at is the difference here and what it's going to be an unexpected gain or loss here in this case it's going to be we're going to be looking at a gain in this example so uh, what we'd have here expected return of 44,000 actual return here 64,000 so you can see the difference is an unexpected gain here of $20,000 okay so what we would do to record this here so we would reduce our pension expense by $64,000 based on the actual return here of $64,000. And now for this unexpected gain here, we would debit or increase our pension expense here by $20,000. Now we're going to look at how we'd record this here in our other comprehensive income. Now let's go on here with our pension expense. We have some amortization here of prior service costs, let's say of 10,000 here for the year. Now what we would do here, and we're gonna look at our net amount here for year X1 so we can record this in our journal entries. So you net out your debits and your credits here, and we're gonna get pension expense for the year here of $126,000. Okay, so we looked at the expected return versus our actual return here. So let's, and we had the unexpected gain of 20,000 in this example. Now let's move over to our cash account here for our pension contributions. Let's say, uh, uh, for cash purposes here, we reduce it by $105,000 for a contribution here we made to our plan assets here. So for our cash account for the year here, we have $105,000 reduction or credit here. Now, this is where we're going to move over to our other comprehensive income here. And really, we have two different uh, other comprehensive income accounts that we have to deal with. First, for our prior service costs, and it's good, these other comprehensive income, remember, they're part of equity here on the balance state here. And then the other account we're going to have, or the other comprehensive income, that's going to be for the gain or loss here on our investment. Okay, so working with our other, starting with our other comprehensive income for our prior service cost here. So this is where we amortize the prior service cost here, and we would have credited it here for $10,000 since we uh, re debited the amount here in our pension expense for $10,000. So uh, our other comprehensive income here for our prior service cost for the year here, uh, we would have had a credit here, total amount of $10,000. And then let's just say we had a beginning amount here of a debit amount here of $150,000 or a decrease here in our other comprehensive for the $150,000. So at the end of the year here, we just net out our credit here or increase in our other comprehensive income by $10,000 against the uh, beginning balance of $150,000 debit or reduction here in our other comprehensive income. So the net amount for the year here is going to give us $140,000 thousand dollars here reduction in our other comprehensive income. Ten thousand dollar credit here reduces our hundred and fifty thousand dollar beginning balance here or a reduction here in our other comprehensive down to 140,000 at the end of year X1. Okay so now let's move over to the other comprehensive income for our gain and loss here. 
Okay, so what we would do here, remember we had the gain here, the pension expense, we debited it here for $20,000 for that unexpected gain here. So what we would do for our other comprehensive income here for this gain and loss, for the gain here, we would credit or increase our other comprehensive income by $20,000. So for year X1 here, total uh, increase for other comprehensive income for the gain here of $20,000. And just for our, ex big, our example here, the beginning balance, let's say it was zero. So our end of the year, we're going to have a net amount here of $20,000 for that gain here on the unexpected gain here on the uh, expected return of $44,000 versus the actual return here of $64,000. Now, let's move over to our next account here. It's going to be the pension asset and liability account here. And what we're going to do is we have to determine what our beginning and ending balances are to determine what amount we have to include here for the year here in this uh, pension asset or liability account. Okay, so for our beginning of the year X1 here, we're going to have a credit or reduction here as uh, to our pension asset or an increase in our pension liability here of $60,000. So how do we get that here? So let's move up to these other accounts here. We're going to have our projected benefit obligation as a liability account here versus our plan assets as our asset account here on this pension plan. So what we want to do here is we want to look at just our beginning balances here. So our pension benefit obligations, we had a credit here, our increase of our beginning amount here, $700,000 is a liability on this pension uh, plan here. And then for our plan assets, we had a debit here or a fair value of our plan assets here, $640,000 at the beginning of year X1. So just making the comparison here, you can see that our projected benefit obligation, $700,000 is greater than our plan assets here, $640,000. So that is going to give us a reduction here in our pension asset or a pension liability. The difference gives us $60,000. And that's really the guideline here that we use here. We take our pension benefit obligation, and if it's greater than our plan assets, which it is in this case, then we'd have a pension liability. The difference gives us a credit or a reduction here in our pension plan assets or sets up a liability of $60,000. Now, if our pension benefit obligation here was less than our pan plan assets, then we'd have a pension asset here. We would debit it or increase our pension asset account here by the difference here. That's if the beginning balance here, pension benefit obligation here, was less than our plan assets. In this case, it wasn't. So what we have set up here is a pension, a reduction to our pension assets or a pension liability of 60,000 in this case. Okay, so the next thing we have to do is we have to go down here to, and determine what we got at the end of the year here yeah, as a pension asset or a liability account. And we'll look at that. And we have to do that. We're gonna compare our beginning amount here in a pension asset uh, liability account to the ending balance in our pension asset liability account to determine what we have to have a balancing amount here for a pension asset or liability or for our, for the year here. And that's what we're gonna record as our journal entry. So let's go look at our ending amount here, year X1, and we determine that to be $51,000 here, a pension liability of $51,000. So where do we get that? So we go down to our projected benefit obligation and our plan assets again here and make the comparison. And let's just look at what we're doing here. So we started out with our projected benefit obligation that was at 700,000 here. Then we add to it the service costs and our interest costs in of 90,000 and 70,000. And then benefits were paid to the uh, pension uh, uh, people getting the pension here of $40,000. So we would reduce our pension benefit obligation by that amount. So netting our debits and credits, the ending amount we get is 820,000 here for projected benefit obligation as a liability on this pension plan. Now moving over to our plan assets here. In this case, we started with the fair value here at the beginning of the year, 640,000. Now we have to add to it or increase our plan assets by the, um, the actual return here of $64,000 on those plan on that pension plan. And then we'd also have increased it here by $105,000. That was the cash contribution that was paid to the plan assets here, but we would reduce it by the benefits paid to the people receiving the pension here. And then netting our debits and credits here, we're going to come up with plan assets of $769,000, and that would be their fair value at the end of year X1. So again, we just compare a, a projected benefit obligation here at 
820,000 to our plan assets here is 769,000 and you're going to see our liability here is greater than our asset amount here by $51,000. So again, the guideline here, this is where the pension benefit obligation is greater than our plan assets, then we're going to have a pension liability here of $51,000. Okay, so we know what our beginning amount here is 60,000. We know and that was beginning of the year here, end of the year here we have 51,000 in our credit here. So, what we have to do in this case we're going to determine we need a debiting amount or we have to increase our pension asset here account by $9,000 so that we get down to our ending amount here of 51,000 where we started with 60,000 reduce it here by 9,000 increase our pension asset by 9,000 gets us to uh, pension liability here 51,000 at the end of the year okay so let's look at it in terms of how we do it, balance it with the other accounts that we used here. So let's go down here. So say our pension expense for the year here, we had a debit of 126,000 in it. And then what we're doing here, we're gonna, it's really gonna be a plug here to pension liability, we're, we're gonna, it's gonna be $9,000. But how do we get to that here? So what we would do is we look at our debits versus our credits. Our funding here, our cash account, we had credited that here for 105,000. Then our amortization of our prior service costs, we had a credit here of 10,000. And that's the year end amounts that we calculated here. And then our other comprehensive income, the gain here, we had a credit here of $20,000. So looking at our credits here, what do we got? 115. 135,000 here. So what do we get here? We just have, we can determine our pension liability based on the balancing amount here. So uh, what we had, 126,000. So we need uh, 9,000 here to bring us up to, in debit amount here of 135,000 to balance with our credits here of uh, 135,000. So that's how you determine your pension liability, any increases or decrease any increases or decreases. You have to look at your accounting here for your various accounts that you have for your pen, uh, what you would record here for your pension uh, expenses and and you'd have to look at your funding here and your also your amortization of prior service costs and any gain or loss here you have on on the pension plan. Okay, so we really had two uh, way, means of looking at here to determine what our pension asset and liability was. Okay, so now let's look at, let's move down here and let's just look at how we'd record this here. Our journal entries for our pension, our pension accounting here. So what we would do here, we take, we start with our pension expense here. We debited that here for $126,000. So that was the pension expense for the year here. And then our pension asset or liability amount here, we had a debit of 9,000 in that. And then our cash account, we had a credit or reduced that here by $105,000. And then we have the other comprehensive income for a pension uh, prior service costs here, we had a credit of 10,000 there. And then this other comprehensive, the gain on this, on our, on our unexpected gain here of $20,000. So that's how you record the journal entries here uh, for this pension plan. Now you don't see any projected benefit obligation or plan assets listed here. All you see is the accounts that we work with here to determine, determine our pension expense, our pension asset and liability, and then the the funding here and also the other comprehensive income we broke that out between the prior service cost here and of other comprehensive income for the gain here so that's how you record your journal entries for this uh, problem here now let's go back up here one more time here and just review review what we're looking at here so when you're dealing with these pension plans here you get this other comprehensive income which is part of equity here you have to break it down between what you have for your prior service cost, which you're amortizing there, and then what you have any gains or losses here on the pension, uh, on the plan assets themselves. So that's what you have to do here. When Just break it down here. And what you want to do is you want to look at whatever you started with, whatever adjustments you had for the year here, any credits or debits, you was taken, you adjust your beginning balance by those uh, increases or decreases here to determine what your ending amount would be in your other comprehensive income account here. And then one last thing that we want to look at here, and we didn't look at it, let's go back and look at it here. So between our, what we want to look at is how we, this expected return here, uh, 
uh, 44,000 versus our actual return here is 64,000. So what was included in our plan assets here? So we go back to our plan assets account here, the actual return amount here, we would debit or increase our plan assets by that $64,000. Now remember that, that all I wanna show here is that's our actual return here on the plan assets or the investment. Now the difference here was that unexpected gain and that went to the other comprehensive income account here as a gain here. So that's all I wanted to note here when you're dealing with this actual return versus the expected return and how you deal with it for your plan assets here. Now remember your plan assets here and your projected benefit obligation, those are memo accounts here and they just keep track of your liability on your pension plan here versus your asset amount here on your pension plan. Okay, so that'll summarize our discussion here on these in this case, we looked at a uh, unexpected gain here, where the expected return here on our plan assets here was less than the actual return. All right, so that'll summarize it.